Hiya guys, John with you again, and this is the final reveal of the M24 Chaffee from Italieri in 135th scale. It's kit number 6502. And I finished with it. So let's uh, pause this for a couple of seconds. I'll reset up and we'll have a look at uh, my finished article. And there it is. There she is in, in all her glory. And uh, I'll give it a slow twirl while we uh, we look at it and discuss it. Um, when I say discuss it, I mean ramble on and give you a pile of bullshit. Anyway, um, the kit itself, like I said, it went together beautiful. Apart from the side skirts, that was the only problem I had with it. And that was down to um, a bit of warping. Simple as that. That's all it was. It was just a bit of warping in these um, fenders. So, or whatever you want to call them. I don't know what to call them. Uh, but there was a bit of warping in them. So when the side skirts went on, they didn't quite fit so good. So um, you can see it there. I didn't get them. I just couldn't get it right. But, you know, it, it, it could go down as... Uh, you know, normal bit of damage or whatever. Um, uh, I haven't damaged it in any way, as in, you know, cut chunks off it and uh, battle damaged it. It's just dirtied um, from the elements. Like I said, it's in Vietnam, so it would be uh, that reddish, um, reddish brown mud that. Uh, when summer comes in, that mud turns to dust and gets into everything. Um, I'm a, I don't know, not really talking from experience, just talking from watching enough films on documentaries and God knows what else on Vietnam in that area. And it's anytime you see armor or trucks or car, anything like that, um, they've got that red dust in them. So. I got that done with the um, with the sludge wash, and I got that uh, reddish brown um, effect into it. Uh, for that, I used um, I made my own little concoction, shall we call it? Um, I used uh, I just move this here to the side. Actually, I move, move that back there like that, so we can keep it in the shot. I used um, the old War Pigs Alclad Two again. I like this stuff. Um, Steve Mottram gave me this, and I'm nearly out of it. Um, it's just, it, it, if you want it darker, just add in a few um, uh, scrapings of a darker colour of um, pastels in with it, and it works perfect. So I use it as a base for other sludge washes, and for this one, I just used that on its own for the sludge wash. Um, I'm after covering over bloody everything now. It's typical out of me. Uh, yeah, here we go. Now, uh, excuse me there. There's the sludge wash, basically. What's, it's just what I've left of it. And if you see, now that's after settling. But you can see where it dries, the, the color it goes to when it dries, and the kind of the, the dust effect from it. Now. If I get a brush and give that a little stir, it goes very, very brown. So when you paint it onto your model, as you can see, your model gets coated in that. But when it dries in, it dries in like that, which is a nice kind of a, a reddish brown color. And then with a bit of, um, when that dries onto the model, a bit of, uh, a bit of kitchen paper, and um, some cotton buds and things, and take off what you don't need. And in areas around uh, handles and fragile bits and pieces, and also I found it in, in around the bottom of the, um, the, the 50 cal here. It kind of collected a bit too much 
couldn't get in paper, couldn't get in um, um, cotton bud, and I don't have the uh, little, to me, little cotton buds, tiny little ones. So what I did was I used a paintbrush. I wet the paintbrush and took most of it off, and then just with a damp brush, moved it off, then wiped it off. You know what I mean? Got that area nice and wet, in and along there, and just used the paintbrush, dabbing it onto um, a bit of tissue, keeping it clean, keeping the paintbrush clean, but moist, not totally wet, not dry, just moist. And what it'll do is it'll remove, and you can manipulate the dust and the mud around into where you want it to and it works it works it really does and it, it, it comes up fabulous now that might look good in the pictures which i think it does but in real life that even looks better again now it's got a metal barrel so what i did was instead of trying you know to make it look metallic looking at the end being already metal underneath just scraped off a little bit of the um of the green paint just a little bit give it a little um little rub of a, 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 a very very fine sander and that gave us the, uh, you know, the metal effect around the tip of the barrel. The metal effect on um, areas like, uh, you know, there's a little bit here under the turret. There's that ring there, the front of that there, and a couple of little other spots. Not too many of them. You can the the next pro doing the process with a, with a pencil and getting the graphite to get that little shiny big pieces and things like that. It can be overdone so easily because you could, you, in other words, you could go around the whole thing, and all it would just look horrible. So it's it it's where you break off aerials and things. Well done, Johnny. Fucking eat you, Joe. Anyway, uh, that's another thing to be glued back on. I'm always breaking things off, aren't I, lads? Constantly at it. Anyway, I glue that back in again in a while. So it's no major biggie. Um, it, of all the things that come off it's one of the easiest bloody things to go back on um, if you remember my I, I knocked off one of the yolks that, uh, that was up here and when I went to put it back on it pinged off my tweezers straight onto the floor and uh, I couldn't find it could not find it anywhere um, tried to fabricate one up and it just looked wrong so I just took off the other one. Simple as that. That's all I did. I just took off the other one. Um, Switcher even said to me about, about the handles and things. If they haven't got a locator pin, just drill a small little kind of a pilot hole for them. And I'll definitely do that in the future. So thanks, Rick. Thanks for that one. Um, I should have copped it. it. It's so simple. Uh, you know, if it hasn't got a locator hole, give it a locator hole. Do you know? Uh, so... Thanks, Rick, for that one. I, I, I should. That's common sense. I should have copped that, but uh, there's lots of things in common sense that I don't cop. Uh, was, was, I shut up <laughs> before I hanged living day or something. Anyway, um, there she is. Anyway, and I think it looks it looks lovely. I really do. It's a lovely little um, lovely little tank, lovely little kit to make. Uh, those tracks were absolutely fabulous to put together. They went together so nicely and they look good. They really, really do. They really look the biz. Um, uh, you know, I can't, I, like, like I said, I can't fault this kit in any way. Apart from the side skirts, and like I said, that's down to a bit of warping, um, a bit more care and attention from me i'd have probably got it a bit better um you know it's to a certain degree it's kind of realistic if you know what i mean i've seen armor doing things like that where it splits but um you know there's the black i've never seen uh taillights in blue but it said blue so i did in blue and uh there's the uh, toe hitch and things. Give it a little bit of rust around it just to show that it was used and just kind of shine it up a bit as mm. well with the pencil just to show it in different areas how, how it got used and stuff. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's very hard to get a single colour vehicle to um, 
to look right and not look as if so bland. So between the uh, pre-shading and getting the uh, nice lighter colours in different areas, the washes and other different things like that, you can get a lovely little effect and uh, you can make it quite realistic indeed. Um, I do like the way the, uh, the 50 cal come out. really looks uh, looks the biz and um, I've seen aftermarket ones looking not as good as that so, and that's the kit supplied one so um, as someone asked me in the comments on the last one is are those tracks kit supplied or were they um, aftermarket and as I said to the chap I don't buy aftermarket I don't I, I think it's personally you mean it's, it's down to personal taste um, I find like that, like just say like with the tiger tank that time. I wanted to, I'd, I'd have loved to have got the frul set of frul tracks for it. I would have loved to. Yeah, of course it would have looked fabulous, but it would have doubled the price of my kit, like twenty seven quid sterling uh, for a set of frul tracks for that. I can buy another kit for twenty seven quid sterling. You know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm getting at? So I'll use kit supply tracks. I know with the tiger the tax. Basically, they did. They they fell apart. They did not work for me. And I was lucky enough that I had a set of um, of rubber vinyl tracks. But if I was going buying, had to buy aftermarket tracks. Just say I didn't have those rubber vinyl tracks. Um, AFV Club does rubber vinyl tracks for I think they're about maybe they're around ten euro, and uh, even at that, I'd have whinged paying it. <laughs> I'm deadly I am. Uh, you know, it's just that any money you can save and things like that, you can use for other things. That's how I, 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 you know, I make my own aerials, I make my own tow cables. I do other bits of scratch building and things like that that save money. And it's like aftermarket. People go off and buy aftermarket aerials. They buy aftermarket cables. You can buy, you, 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 can, you can make a cable in, say, 10 minutes taking your time doing it right and you'll get it to look just as good if not better than some of some of the aftermarket stuff that they're charging ridiculous money for so anyway there's my uh me chaffy tell me what you think of it whether you like it or you don't like i said i don't care personally i do like it um it would be nice if you did as well um if you have any questions stick them in the comment box i'll answer them for you um, and like I said, just let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to give it a like if you like it. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe and we get some more future uh, future builds and things. I'm uh, I'm pretty prolific when it comes to uh, kit building. I'm always at something on the go. Um, I don't think a week has gone past that I haven't put up a video <laughs> within the last year. So, um, there we go. And I'll leave you with that. So, thanks, lads. Thanks for uh, for subscribing. Uh, I'm up to 415 subscribers. I just checked that. had a look at that there this morning. For, my God, 415. I couldn't believe it. So, anyway, thank you, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting and liking. And... Uh, just thanks for taking the time out to even bother watching these things. I enjoy making them. I enjoy doing all this. And uh, it is nice that uh, it's it, it's getting some response. <laughs> I'm not talking to myself. So anyway, let's catch you up in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, stay tuned for future uh, builds and things.